Hi, welcome to the Movie Losers Blog. This is where I will be talking about some indie movies that I think are awesome. And my business partner Patrick may come on from time to time. And this is just uh, basically where we're going to talk all things independent film, whether it's trends that we see coming or movies that we think are really awesome. And I actually have a few movies that I would love to recommend. And considering that we're in quarantine right now, I thought it would be a really great time to make some of those recommendations, okay? I am so excited to share these movies with you for various reasons. So, um, yeah, if there's any movies that you want um, me to review or my thoughts on, just feel free to give that to me. Otherwise, like, subscribe, all the things that normally people say. Also, this is going to be where I put all the information about how to follow me on social and how to follow my company, Pi Films, of which I'm the EP line producer of. Um, we make independent films and commercials normally, not during quarantine, but otherwise, that's what we normally do. Um, we just finished our first feature film passing through this past summer, August of 2019. We went to uh, the EFM at Berlinale to shop it around. So fingers crossed, we see some good stuff with that. And we have some amazing sales agents that are really helping us get our film out there to be seen. We own about 10 scripts as a company and we're always uh, looking to create new things and to collaborate with new people. So yeah. Okay, one of the movies I'm gonna recommend is Freaks um, on Netflix streaming right now because I'm only gonna recommend movies that are easy to get on streaming or get this, you might have to rent them. Oh my god! Okay, so um, Freaks is an amazing movie. It actually um, is way better than you think and I know a lot of people are talking about it right now, which, you know, like, it's like I'm on the bandwagon, but I had a bunch of people tell me about this movie and I started watching it. And I was like, this movie kind of, oh, it's not what I thought it's going to be. But no, it's actually really great. So it has Emil Hirsch, Bruce Dern, this really amazing kid, Lexi Coker, playing like the lead character. And it's, it's like a superhero movie, but on a lower budget. What I think is so amazing from a producer standpoint is it really only takes place in like three locations and it finds a way to bring telepathy into the whole thing and to bring really low-key superhuman powers into it and I think it's just so amazing like when you look at it when I've argued with people since film school which I left film school in 2007 so 12 years ago 13 years ago now um people thought it was crazy that I would say no we should shoot this look this script in one location because it's all we have and we have no money and they're like no we need to try 20 locations and I was like no 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 minimal locations and you can still have an amazing cool fun interesting movie which i think this really is it does a lot with the budget that it has um it actually has surprisingly good practical and special effects and yeah it's just a really interesting little film that i think anyone that is an indie filmmaker should um, watch next up um i think this is is gonna sound crazy but um Harold and Maude. Okay, so it's an older film. Uh, classic Hal Ashby directed. I actually did a whole co podcast uh, with everyone in my company about it, about why it's great, why it's interesting. And I'm going to stick with it. It is very, a very cool, very interesting um, movie, honestly. And the thing that I like about it is I actually really miss... Some of the movies in the early 90s, like the Polly Short, yes, I just said Polly Short, get over it, uh, films that were all about really accept who you are. So you only have two friends in the world because you're weird, but who cares that you're different? Who cares that you're an apple? You're not supposed to fit in. You're supposed to just have like a few friends and feel good about just being your individual version of you, which movies nowadays like try to force everyone to like each other, which I don't understand. That's not how humans work. But, um, I really like that message and Harold and Maude is kind of like that like you're not odd maybe you need to find your own person and your own people that you know get you and get who you are and I think Harold and Maude does that really well obviously it is um graduate s because it's about this young 20 something kid trying to find his way in the world and he keeps uh faking his suicide to freak his mother out just for attention and he's just trying to do something a little different than everyone else in his life 
and he meets this live wire of a woman, Maud, who's 80 years old or about to turn 80. And it's just about how they connect and how he actually learns how to value life by just seeing someone else living it. And yeah, it's just a really beautiful little movie. It is kind of aimless. It's very Soderbergh-esque, if you will. I.e., like, it just is, some of the shots are a little long. It's, you're not sure where it's going to go. You could probably cut 20, 30 minutes out of the movie. But I'm along for the whole ride. I think it's amazing. Okay. Now for the final one, which is going to seem like a duh. Like, of course, you're going to recommend this one. Uh, Soderbergh's Contagion, which is streaming on Amazon. And Harold and Maude was also on Amazon, I believe, as well. Um, okay, Contagion. No one wanted to see this movie. When it first came out, I, was, I didn't even want to see it. I was like, you know what? I love Soderbergh. Let's give it a hit. Let's let's, let's watch it. Freaking first five minutes, Gwyneth Paltrow, like, dies. And you're like, what? She's, like, the big name in this movie. And then there's Matt Damon. There's uh, Marion Cotillard. There is... Um, uh, Lawrence Fishburne there's so many people sorry I'm not even going to go on for the amount of people that are in this movie that are names freaking Dimitri Martin's in it you know like like not being Dimitri Martin it is such a good movie and this is what I love about it okay because at the same time I also watch Outbreak and the big difference is Outbreak's a really big like government conspiracy movie that's oh my god they had this disease so it's like what kind of some people think about COVID-19 right now they just released it right after kill a bunch of people like stop with all that crazy shit. No one can no one can get their head out of their ass to figure out like free health care for all in America. So I, I don't think that happened. But anyway, um, I love Contagion because it is a movie that actually is not that expensive for how many actors are in it, how many locations are there are. And it is just a really well edited, very well paced movie. And Jude Law plays a quintessential fucking fake news blogger that I think is actually more pressing now than when it first came out. So it's really, really interesting how it makes sure that it always does a lot of cutaways. So you know the effect of this contagious disease on the world. Plus you learn a lot about how we respond to things like that and why we feel like we're kind of feeling right now with taking care of uh, coronavirus victims and, and, and everything else. So it's, it's a really interesting film. It also shows the worst case scenario if people act like damn fools um, when something like this is happening and how we really actually do have to work together and realize we're in the same boat when it comes to something like this. And yeah, it's, it's really amazing. It's a really great movie. Well shot, well acted. And by the end, it's just like, it kind of gives you a sense of dread, which I know it really, I don't think that it's supposed to, but it does have a low level sense of dread in the whole thing and and i think that's because it's so easy for it to happen is really what it shows you that a disease like this can happen at any time and it's only like a small few people that really know what to do with this and it kind of almost makes you feel like helpless because there's not much you can do you rely on other people for food for shelter for everything and so it kind of gives you a drive to be more self-sufficient, which is why I'm kind of like a baby doomsday prepper. All my friends know I'm, I'm crazy. I've been talking to people about that. Like, oh, well, you can do this with this and try this and make sure you buy this backpack next time. It helps you out with 72 hours worth of food and all this random stuff. But um, yeah, it's freaking awesome. So those are my three recommends of the week for uh, any films that really have a lot to give and how they're so amazing and just, you know, something that you can watch while you're in quarantine or while you're trying to pretend to work from home or just uh ones that i think you should watch because uh your life will be better because of them and it'll make you a better filmmaker and when you're watching them do not forget to look at them like wow where did they really put their money you know and um, some of these films i'm actually going to be uh watching on my podcast or already have watched and we have like a quick 20 minute roundup it's called uh PYNJ uh, Stellar Film Commentary. We have a snack size version that's about 15 minutes long where it's just us actually talking about the movie. And then there's one, you know, for some of you out there that may be lonely and want to watch a movie with a friend, but, you know, it's like 2 in the morning, you can turn it on. Uh, we're on Apple Podcast. We're on YouTube. We're on our own BuzzFeed link so that you can get yeah, BuzzFeed. Buzzsprout uh, link so that... Uh, 
you know, you can watch a movie and it's almost like you're watching a movie with your friends and think that we're crazy. Anyway, uh, I will see you again. Probably going to record these like once every two or three days, recommending new movies and also breaking down some films.